you signed up for the demo. Good morning and welcome back to the channel guys. It's Saturday and what better than to go and pick my new bike up. So we've headed up to Virtue BMW in Shipley. But yeah, new bike day. Woo! -hoo. So I'm just gonna go and see Dan in a minute. But also, I'm taking an F900 out today. I'll just uh, come over here. There it is. Look at this beast. Beauty. So we're taking that out. Can't wait. Been wanting to get on one of these since they come out. I think they're an absolute stunning bike. Let me show you some of the bikes. And Macarena, here's a wave. Trade-ins. There's the girls. Right, we'll go and uh, find out and see what we're doing. This is us. Just getting suited and booted, ready to set this beast out. Dave's coming out with us on the new 1300. Right, as I said. I've been dying to get out on one of these. Try it out. It does look the part, you've got to agree. Sexy looking bike. Certainly well balanced. Really well balanced. Right, that's us filled up. Off we go. One thing I will say about this, now straight away, the first thing you notice compared to the old 850 is how light it feels. Macarena's got the 850 and that feels nimble when you're going, but this feels light from the off. And that quick shifter is silky smooth, look at this. So smooth, down the box, down, rev it up, off, down, really smooth quick shifter, it's so nimble, feels really light. I can say this for it, is it's comfy, really comfy. This one comes with the shower suspension will say it does feel a little soft but I'm sure you'll be able to adjust that out the heated grips on uh, just beginning to warm up is there anything like the 1250 GS eh? or the GS that we spot on it's not the best day for testing it the weather the roads will be a bit greasy on Kuru 4s. I actually had Kuru 3s on my 790 when that was new and I was really impressed with them tyres. So if they're anything to go by these Kuru 4s should be an awesome tyre. Come out of town now we're on a few little country lanes. 
one thing you do notice with this is it's quite grunty so um, fourth gear she will just pull I've just been over some speed humps just let's see rolled over them kept it in fourth and just accelerated and it's pulled from really low down hey stay where you are now you do it idiots It's really nimble. The brakes are good as well. It does dive under braking. That back brake's really good. And what's nice about it is having that extra little stepper on the pedal, the Enduro pedal. The roads are really dirty still. It's not ideal when you test riding a bike. So now, now is no clunks or bangs. Engine's a bit tappy. No worse than a KTM. Right, fourth gear there. That's just 2,000 revs. I can officially say the heated grips are absolutely to the point where they burn your hands. So that's a plus. I'm just going to turn them down now to one. So we get on with that. Well, that is physically burning my hand. Oh, we might be able to get to uh, wind it open a little bit in a minute. Another thing with this, it has the bar risers and the seating position is pretty spot on. I'm 5'10 for 30 in seam and I'm really comfy. I can get, get my feet down on the floor, put the balls on my feet, and just shovel, shuffle over a little bit, get my foot down. But it's not that bad size wise right, for a view sounds nice when you when you give it some as well I think it's one of them bikes what wants to be red Bikes high revs. Yeah, do we get a lot of buffs in? It's a windy day anyway. Yeah, get around about 70 and there's a lot of buffs in. You only got a short screen on this one. That wind, you know, you know about it when it's windy on this. It does feel, I've said it before, it feels a really light bike. So you get that wind, it grips hold of you, and you can feel it pushing you. Is that wind it? It's pulling my helmet off. I don't know how hard David's trying there. I'm not having any problems keeping up with him at all. 
Might be holding the gears a little bit longer. Like, oh, it's the fun sometimes, that. It's probably not getting buffeted around the same as me. I'm just going to tuck in. Just feel that there, just blowing me, Tom. Blowing me. Really blowing me. So the answer to the tour inside things, I think the GSA will probably be the better one. The lack of protection on this, like, wasn't designed for it, but there's going to be a lot of people out there asking, will it tow? Well, yeah, any bike will tow. I think from a comfort point of view, wind and protection, if you're not wanting the off-road side of it, then the GSA, because you get a lot higher fairing. Like, it's actually blowing me off, it's nearly pushing me off the bike here. Response is really good. Fuel injections spot on. No jerkiness about it at all. Really linear power, usable power. It's crackers because when it's like this, really windy, you feel like you need a pillion on the back or a bit of luggage just to hold you down. We all anchor after these light bikes for off road. When it's windy and you're on the road, Anything above 40 mile an hour, it doesn't half blow you around. It's where it all comes down to there's no perfect bike. Because for touring, for me, you can't beat the 1250 GSA or the GS. Obviously now the 1300, which I'm still on the fence about. And we're on. Calm Dave. See what this has got now. Oh, it sounds beautiful that in fact rolling it on. I do think this is going to sell really well. Someone rides this. It's not. It's not 100% the hardcore adventure bike like the 890 and the T7 and the Touareg. So, uh, but I certainly have one. It'd be interesting to see what Touareg and Outback Motor Set come out for it. One thing it's lacking is a decent fast plate. But I will measure the ground clearance when we get back. Because that's one. One thing what looks a little low is the ground clearance compared to the T7s, the, the 890s. But you can't have everything because this feels so much more manageable for someone who's vertically challenged and it is a lot of fun it's so easy to ride leg room's good as well I'm not the tallest guy but it's really comfy on your legs one thing they have got is this distance from the seat to the foot peg seems just right so what would I do if I had this First things first, even though these are pretty solid, these 
uh, hand guards I would change them for part busters purely because I don't like the idea of these bar ends still sticking out I think it's a vaulted it and had that silver bit on the outside yeah I'd have left it I'd change the mirrors again just to some double takes and then I'd have to wait to see like I said earlier what Outback Motor Tech or Toro Tech are going to bring out for this because when we get back I'll show you properly but I've had a quick look and the, the bash plate's not up to much it's on rubber mounts it's a bit flimsy even though it's pretty thick still looks very flimsy and doesn't protect enough and especially with this bike having no actual frame you're going to need something solid the crash bars again they are bolted to the engine which I know a lot of these bikes now it's getting harder and harder to work around that with there being very little frame to the bike as modern bikes now everything's held together with the engine so again might have to just put up with it or the likes of Outback Motor Tech who seem to be the market leaders when it comes to bars and crash crash bars you know all sorts to do they'll probably pretty much come up with something but it's whether they're going to be too bulky or heavy or just just don't look right because at the moment the bars what are on it BMW bars they are quite aesthetically pleasing and they, they're not they're not massive they don't stick out too much and they would protect the engine as long as you didn't have a really bad crash and it pulled the threads or snapped the engine case or you know, broke the engine case in but I think it's a risk all those adventure lads are taking nowadays uh, luggage wise I would go for soft luggage on the back of this because I think the back end looks stunning I think it just looks really sexy and mean so I'd leave the back end and probably take the passenger foot pegs off you're never going to, uh, well I'd never take a passenger on the back of this, plus there's no room. But set the foot pegs off, soft panniers, uh, hate to say it, I would probably put a little bit of a rack on the top, which hopefully they'll bring some out what just follows the contours of the bike. Uh, what else would I do? I don't know, might have to put some pivot pegs on her because I've, I've got a bad foot and I can't move my foot so pivot pegs help me you know change gear but for most of you riders out there there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing wrong with the pegs what are on it I believe the levers but saying that though the typical BMW levers they snap on the end you see the always you know, that little indent on the end what you drop it the brake dead easy but they are designed like that but for now I'll just leave the levers I'd stick a decent sat nav on the front so as I was saying I'd stick a decent sat nav on there I'll say sat nav tablet it's pretty solid as well that so it would take it take a decent sized tablet like my Carpe or one of the new Samsung tablets and then for me at the moment I'd leave it maybe in future you might want to get a, a kit what hires the bike a little bit because of the ground clearance but at the moment i think it'd make a good all-round adventure bike we are going to be doing a, an easy lane i think hiding it you can tell it's going to be pretty good pretty stable it's got a long wheelbase so it should be pretty stable off-road won't steer as quick as an 890 or a 790 but it'll make it a lot more stable especially in the uh, single track stuff uh, the, the 790s, 890s is as much of a weapon they are and I, I love my 790 can be very twitchy it's, uh, but it's what you get used to the engine on this totally, totally new engine yet to see the how it's gonna get on but 
obviously a Chinese engine made under license for BMW so the quality should be there it's not like your cheap AliExpress shit well we're uh, at some off-road so let's put her in Enduro Enduro Pro DCT warning no DCT so Enduro Pro let's go for it let's see what it's got Well, got some go up and go. Tire, that rear tire is not got the traction of the uh, rallies, the rails. Ah. So, what do I make to that? Well, it's not bad, not bad, not quite as comfy as the uh, 890 and the 790 stood up. I think that's just a matter of getting used to some of Here comes Dave! Got some video footage of him! Whoa! <laughs> Got wet feet. Right, let's go for another run. Take it steady, pass these.
look at BMW Shipley. So what do I think? Love it, absolutely love it. We've done about 80 miles off road, road. It's been brilliant. I'm gonna go in now. We're gonna get Dan to go through the specs on the bike. But from what I can see, it's a full spec bike with all the Enduro pack on it. The only thing it hasn't got is cruise control and the keyless ride. So for me, if I was having one, the only thing I would want is the cruise. But yeah, it's a lovely bike. I do think that BMW I've actually got it right. Right, well we've just got back and got the proper man on the job, Dan. He's going to show us round the bike properly and tell us exactly what this bike comes with and how much this one, this actual spec would cost. So if you're interested, get yourself up here to BMW Shipley and speak to Dan. Right, so Dan. Tell us all about it. What does this bike come with? So, this is the new F900 GS, which has replaced the F850, but it's a completely brand new bike. So it's got a new frame and it's totally redesigned. It shed 14 kilos from right. the old model. So now you've got a, a plastic tank rather yeah. than a big metal yeah. tank. Uh, this particular bike has got the Enduro Pro Pack on, so you've got the shower fully adjustable suspension at the front. Yeah. And it's got the titanium forks inserts, which are a nice, like, blacky blue colour, if you can see yeah. that. See that? Uh, it comes with the bash plate on there, which is thicker than the tinfoil one you'd find on the standard right. one. Yeah. Crash bars do not come as part of the Enduro Pack, but right. they've been added on, so if you're going to do some lanes, obviously a good thing to have. Um, BMW is taking a bike buster, so they're now standard. Right. Same kind of idea, you've got the yeah. metal frame, so if you come down, it's going to stop any, any damage on there. Uh, as we move around. So, just, just this is all part of the Enduro pack. Exactly. So, that. basically, we've got the bike busters style and you've, the shower. You've got the shower, you've got the skid plate. Skid plate. And then you've got the fully adjustable ZF rear. Trunk and and, and as that's well. the Enduro pack. Exactly that. Oh, and bar risers as well. So all right. Bar yeah. risers yeah. come as standard. Yeah. Um, on this bike, high mount Acura exhaust is standard. Right. Good thing with this is, unlike Teneris and other bikes, it's not directly attached to the frame. So yeah, if you bend that's a good it, idea. Yeah. If you bend yeah. that, all the bends going to be in there. It's not yeah. going to snap your frame and write your bike yeah. off. Uh, so they come with standard tyres. Fifty pound option. Carew fours. As you know, they're a good yeah. what sixty forty tyres. Yeah, probably. they're a good tyre. Yeah, I like them. Uh, bench seat available in low, standard and high. That's a standard and that's bench. That's a standard bench. Yeah, so the, the high bench seat comes further across and the low scoops out even more. Right. New style tail tidy. And then this particular bike has got a few extra bits and bobs on, so it's got M Endurance chain. It's got a quick shifter on there as well. So correct me if I'm wrong, I thought the M Endurance chain come with Enduro pack. Um, do you know what? I'd have to fact check myself. Yeah, I thought it did come with the Enduro pack, so In we'll fact, check up you, on that. No, I think you probably are right, but the M Endurance yeah. chain is good, so they say it's maintenance free, but they'll be lying if it was maintenance free. Yeah. All chains they're yeah. maintaining, but you don't have to do it quite as much as yeah. a standard chain. Um, so that gives you what you get in an Enduro Pro Pack, and then optional extras above and beyond that. There's a few things missing from this bike, so it's got no cruise control and it's not keyless. Yeah. But it has got a quick shifter. Something like this, uh, in this kind of spec, you're looking at about 14,800. So as right. a base model, 11,995. Yeah. Add the Enduro Pro Pack on a couple of grand. Yeah. And then whatever other bells and whistles you get, like the keyless bits and the cruise. Yeah. Um, you add them on thereafter. Um, yeah, all in all, I'd say it's a tenor killer. Maybe yeah. a KTM 790 killer. Um, good thing with these as well. You buy that Enduro Pro Pack and unlike the other bikes where you've got to go get rally raid kits for your suspension yeah, and all yeah. the bits, uh, this is ready to go for right. as it stands. Yeah. So just what would a cruise control cost extra? Uh, I think it's 360 quid. So if you wanted this yeah. with absolutely every option ticked, you, you're not far off 16 grand, but that's right. got everything keyless. Yeah. 
cruise control, EV brakes, riding mode pro. You've got yeah. the enduro pro mode on this, which um, takes off your ABS and your bits of logs when you're off road. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, the suspension is probably one of the key things. Yeah. It's most other bikes, other than KTM's, that have WPs. Yeah. Most of those have yeah. really basic. Yeah, they do, yeah. So, yeah. Well, so there you have it. It's uh, the Tenere killer. Is it a KTM killer? That's the question. But I've been impressed with it today. Definitely. For me, I'd stick some rope motors rails on it. Yeah. Maybe. Rails, yeah. I got yeah. them on 10 rail rails. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a bit crap on the road, but. That's it. Yeah. It's, uh, no. I've just got to wait now, see what Tora Tech or Outback Motor Set come out with. Because even though it does come with that extra belly pan, I think if you're going to use it, hardcore you're going to want something a bit more substantial yeah that's but, it there will be brands like that yeah. uh, AXP do decent plastic yeah ones, yeah the well, AXP so. stuff yeah uh, so, yeah, so. Yeah, a few of the bits of luggage as well is coming in quarter three hard luggage for it right I'm just busy making a rack right. at the minute but something like this you're on the Moscow motor, wouldn't you really? Yeah, well I was saying that on the, I was on the road I would go with the Moscow Moto or the Takana which I've yet to review. Uh, soft luggage and then just a bit of a tail. Yeah, bag. that's it. I'd get so, a, probably a reckless 80 on the back yeah, of that. Yeah, like that. So, and I think uh, for me it's, it is at the moment it's, a, it's better than the T7. It's the quality is obviously better than the Aprilia. Uh, quality is better than the KTM. But I don't think it's gonna. I don't think for off road it's gonna kill KTM's reputation. But I think if you <coughs> want to just do some Portugal, your know, Pyrenees, it's a better machine than the KTM because it's comfier and it's it's a lot better built. It's nicer to ride. Believe it or not, it feels lighter than the 790, which you wouldn't believe, would you? But I'm impressed with it. Some people won't be, but I like it. So, like I said, get yourself down here to Shipley, speak to Dan, and get yourself out on it. And let us know what you think. And thanks for watching. Cheers. That's fine.